Alright, quick bonus question before the next segment. In uh, right. firstclass.com, I read this blog about um, which is about you and your mom. And it yep. mentions um, your mom with, um, you know, very Asian parenting styles, you know. Very tiger <laughs> mom, you know. So, um... Yeah. So, um, after you, um... Skate, right, and you didn't do well, right? Well, what are some of the punishments? <laughs> <laughs> no rice for you dinner. You know what? <laughs> no, 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 it, it no. wasn't to that extent. I think... Mm. I think she knew that every time I competed, I tried to give my best. Mm -hmm. Because I myself, obviously, no, you don't want to lose, yeah. right? Nobody <laughs> goes out there to yeah. lose. Yeah. So you try your best, but sometimes they're just unfortunate days and mm -hmm. it happens. Um, but I think the worst thing is probably just disappointment. Nothing nothing physical or anything. It's just, you know, they deep down, they, they always say yes. It's, it's, you know, it's fine, it happens. But you can mm -hmm. tell they're disappointed. And that disappointment sort of makes you feel disappointed in yourself as well. But that's just life, you know. Mm -hmm. Things happen like that, and you just learn from the mistake and uh, learn, understand why that happened, why you didn't win, or mm -hmm. you know, start figuring out what happened so you can improve. Okay. And that's I think important. So for me, yeah, my mom. I mean, my mom was very strict in the sense of she's still a mm -hmm. typical Asian mom in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but she, yeah, she never deprived me of any food or anything. So that's, right. that's fine. <laughs> yeah. That's good, that's good. Yeah, discipline is quite important in sports, right, would you say? Yeah, like, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, that's that's a very important factor. All right. All right, moving on to segment two. So before I ask you about the Olympics and how your qualifying went, I want to ask a bit or like, you know, have a throwback back to your schooling days. Would you yeah. say it's um, important for an athlete to um, have very good results or study hard while training? I think what's important is we cannot neglect studies. Um, studies is still very important, especially in this Asian culture, mm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. Ultimately, in the end, sp sport can bring you a long way, but you always need a backup, and studies will always be that, will be there for you. So you, you, it's, it's very important not to neglect it. And, and in terms of grades, you have to see what you put into it. Know, for the time you put in, you're gonna expect what you get. Obviously, mm -hmm. you don't want to fail, mm -hmm. and obviously, you don't want to always get C's. <laughs> so, I like I, every athlete. I mean, everybody's different. You don't have to get all A stars and all that. It's great if you can. That's amazing. But as long you you have decent grades, I myself was not an A star student. I had A and B's. Sometimes occasional C, but mm -hmm. I was satisfied with what I put in and what I got out of it. Mm. And I know that with those results, I can still get to places um, and you know, it, it will still carry on because in life we have to balance out, you can't have the best of everything. Some people can, which is yeah. amazing for them, <laughs> but people like me, uh, you have the, to give and take. So, you know what, like I said, as long, <laughs> as long as it's decent, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's good, right? Alright, sounds good. Alright, so, before, wait, how, how do you pronounce the place? Oberstdorf, is it? The, the German? Oberstdorf. Oberstdorf. Alright. Yeah. On your route to um, qualifying at Oberstdorf. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oberstdorf, yeah. That's fine. Oberstdorf. Oberstdorf. Yeah. When I, whatever whatever you want to say, I think people will understand. Yeah. yeah, Oberstdorf, Germany. Okay. Or any other is like international tournaments. What are some essential items that you will pack in your like luggage bag? Like must bring items. Oh my skates. Like, like other <laughs> Very than that. that so yeah, so the, the first checklist, I usually have a checklist. The first thing I always mm -hmm. check is number one, my skates mm -hmm. and, and my, my music and my costume, right? Mm -hmm. These are the three things that the whole reason this trip is for, so I need to have those. Um, and then apart from that, it's just whatever other equipment that I have, for example, my foam roller, um, whatever physio tape, all those stuff that, you know, because I'm Always, there will always be something. You never know if something happens. You pull a muscle and all that. So you just want to be on standby. Um, but besides that, I mean, it depends as well. Like when I was competing back then, when I was still studying in secondary school and primary school, um, I always had books with me. Oh, for assignments. Wow. Uh, homework. Yeah. All right. So all, all you young the, kids listening, that's what you need to do. <laughs> you to know what? The deadlines to don't wait for you. Exactly. Deadlines don't wait for you. You gotta get it done and have it. In. It's so true. I I always had some some sort of work with me. Um, 
and I think what's important is I think like everybody travel you know usual your your uh, earphones you know speaker computer standard stuff lah. It's best basically think of it this way like you go for a holiday but with with skating equipment except you don't really go on holiday. <laughs> Yeah, very stressful, high pressure holidays maybe. <laughs> slightly, slightly lah. Slightly. Yeah, alright. So, how many days before like the qualifying did you reach Germany to start like preparing and you know get used to like jet lag or anything like that? So usually, uh, for us like, in in regular competitions, we would arrive the week of it. So let's say the competition starts on Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday, for like time, we would arrive probably Monday or Tuesday. Mm. Uh, because we will have assigned practice times there as well in the in the arena we're going to compete in. Um, sometimes, like you said, across the world, time zone difference would acclimatize to it. Um, but with Germany, I I went a bit earlier. Uh, I went about a week er a week earlier. So I had one week, and then the week of the competition started. So all in all, about two weeks by the end of the competition. Um, mainly because Oberstdorf, I've I've been there already. I think three or four times. Um, it, I, I knew that that was a competition that I had to go to to qualify, so I started early with it early every year. Mm -hmm. um, plus, my, my coach is also German, so oh. he had connections there for me to, to train there as well before mm -hmm. the competition. Um, so it, it, it sort of worked out quite well. So yeah, I, I was there uh, a bit earlier, you know, to get used to, to everything, to the time, uh, to the weather, and also Overstuff is also up in the mountains. so. That's what we call um, the elevation mm -hmm. is different, so it's harder to breathe. Oh, right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so we want to get used to it a little bit more when it's high up. Yeah, the altitude. All right. Are yeah. there like, you know, like how should I say? It? Competition is like very high pressure, and you don't want to like screw anything up, kind of thing. <laughs> so like, that's that's the main goal. That's mm -hmm, the main mm -hmm. goal. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like specific foods you try to avoid like during any competition like you know spicy food or stuff like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean obviously during the week of competition itself just mm -hmm. stay away from whatever you think that might you know like seafood sometimes mm -hmm. you don't know that normally it's very common seafood that you can uh, upset stomach. Uh, spicy food try not to have that mm -hmm. um, but I think if you just eat relatively safe like you know, whatever meat chicken and all that I think it's quite okay um, I on, I personally don't watch my diet too much I, I can't I'm from Malaysia so cannot <laughs> right we, we have so much good <laughs> and unhealthy food that just just eat only so that's fine uh, yeah. but more so it's right. yeah just before the competition don't mess it up you know just one week tahan mm -hmm. and then after you give me whatever you want yeah all right how was your sleep before like qualifying? Were you like, you know, very nervous and you can't fall asleep or was it, you know, relatively good? Not too bad actually. Oh, <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah. it was not too bad. Um, the one thing I do about every competition is I always visualize uh, mm -hmm. at night. So I put mm -hmm. on my earphones, I uh, close my eyes, I visualize myself in the arena competing with my program music on. So um, after like two, three times of going through, automatically you fall asleep so <laughs> it wasn't too bad mm -hmm. it wasn't too bad it, it went to sleep I mean the stress was there but at that time when it was time to, to hit the sack it was, it was not too bad it All actually right. was quite nice oh damn okay that, that's a useful tip for I think many athletes or young athletes yeah yeah mm -hmm. a lot of it is just you know visualize yourself uh, self-talk I think that that really gives you the confidence and a lot of times it's, it doesn't matter what spot if there's no music at all, just put on something you want to listen to or have it nice and quiet. Uh, play at the different scenarios of what could happen. Because a lot of times when we do sports, you have to think on your feet. And mm -hmm. if you have played it out already in your mind, it's going to kick in right away. Instead of you're going to just get shot and you're stuck mm -hmm. there. So, because you already thought of it before. Mm -hmm. So that's one, one good thing for a lot of athletes. Alright. So like, do you play like, do you visualize yourself falling to in case as a backup plan or you just visualize you doing the perfect kind of routine it depends on the situation um so for example i visualize not only not only that night before like sometimes just before the competition as well mm -hmm. so obviously just before you want to visualize yourself mm -hmm. doing everything perfectly uh, but every now and then it's always good to just think of 
what if this happens, then you know what's going to happen because we just think quick on our feet, right? Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, don't always think that you're going to fall down because <laughs> that's quite sad, <laughs> right? <laughs> you still have some mm -hmm. sort of positivity in there, but like I said, mm -hmm. a little bit of 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 um, overthinking does help sometimes. All right. Because accidents do happen, and you can't tell mm -hmm. when it happens. All right, got it. Next thing would be after knowing that you qualified for the Olympics, how did you like celebrate like with your coach and your mom? You know, uh, you guys celebrate, you know, <laughs> go 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 to a German pub or something, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, not really. I mean, the, the thing is, mm -hmm. I celebrated more when I came back home. Mm. Uh, I was just more relief at that time uh, because at, when when I was at the qualifiers, I also had a a, a camera crew with me doing a documentary so the added pressure was there knowing that there's like a whole bunch of yeah. cameras following you mm -hmm. uh, capturing every moment and mm -hmm. after I qualified the next day I had to shoot some more oh, some wow. more scenes mm. so it was like back to work Damn. in a sense because Sounds very yeah tiring. they didn't want to <laughs> they didn't want to shoot it before mm -hmm. the competition because mm -hmm. it's, it's really very stressful so yeah, they thought yeah. okay you make it good great and then we'll do it after so I had to redo some some stuff there. Alright. Yeah. Cool. Alright, so it was just a very busy trip overall and then until it, you it, come I back. mean at night obviously I uh, just go out with some friends, you know, mm. celebrate a little bit. Um but but yeah the, the next day was back to, to shooting and all that. But it was great. It was good. Mm. And then I came back, uh had you know just a few friends and family celebrated a little bit, this and that, yeah. Alright. Sounds good. Alright, next thing would be um Okay, the Winter Olympics. The winter, okay. the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. The yeah. first time Malaysia has ever been to a Winter Olympics as Malaysia yeah. makes its debut. So, how does it feel to, um, you know, walk in the opening ceremony with like the Malaysian flag, the yellow gemilang by your back, you know, bearing it and walking into the stadium? It was, it was one great experience. Um, I'm not gonna lie, what was going through my mind was uh, not to drop the flag. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, don't drop it, don't drop it, you know, keep your focus. Um, but at the same time, it was it was quite interesting to see how everything worked behind the scenes. Um, most of the time, we, Olympics, we always watch on TV, right? Uh, unless you're, you're lucky enough, you'll be able to afford it to go to the venue, buy tickets for the Olympic ceremony, mm -hmm. which is great. Uh, but my honest opinion is, if you watch it on TV, you get a better view. Because <laughs> you can right. see everything. Mm -hmm, if you're there in the stadium, it's more for the experience. Mm -hmm. You don't see as much. Um, right. But us being athletes behind the scenes, I, I didn't get to see anything at all. Because mm -hmm. everything was happening while we were in the waiting room, mm -hmm. lining up to come out. Mm -hmm. So by the time we came out with the flags, the ceremony was almost over. But again, it was good because you know we get to mix with other people from different countries. We we're exchanging pins and all that. So it was it was really um, a very unique experience. It was fun, yeah, very very fun. All right. Do you like practice how to hold a flag or anything? Cause I know no, like back no. back in high school you were always holding like many for the, flags. For march too. pass, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Holding. Uh, it's not quite like that. The thing about this is the march pass flag is actually very very light. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And okay, yeah, very uh -huh. small. Uh -huh. This is the real deal. This is big. It's heavy. Uh, I was not expecting it to be this heavy, but boy, oh. it was. It was. It was quite. It was quite heavy. And then to weigh it uh -huh. as you walk, oh my! Uh -huh. <laughs> it was quite. It was quite stressful as well. But it was fun. Like I said, uh, right. walking out. Stadiums were fully lit. Um, uh -huh. You can't. You can't really see the audience in that because there's so much light. Uh -huh. So I thought I was walking into an empty stadium. Uh -huh. uh, but as I got closer, I could see more people. So. Uh -huh. it's, uh, a little bit more realistic after that. Damn, sounds sounds to be a very cool experience. It, it, it was it was really fun, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was very cool for us to be watching too, like whoa <laughs> walking out of yeah. like the, the hallway and then like whoa <laughs> first Malaysian Winter Olympian. It was, yeah, it was it was nice. It was, <laughs> it was it was nice that Astro actually also mm. aired it on TV. <laughs> mm -hmm. That that's nice. So um for the um, your stay at the Olympic like village could you like describe yeah. to us um, how, how it was, you know, what was the atmosphere like? Like, is there like snack bars anywhere or like, you know, oh. how, how was it? <laughs> it's, it's definitely a very interesting experience. Um, think of it this way. 
So the Olympic Village itself, at least for this this Olympics, it was uh, newly built apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. So imagine a whole apartment complex with different different buildings, um, mm -hmm. and the whole place, the whole entire compound of I don't know, ten buildings all the way. That's the entire village, and we had two villages: one that is down the mountain, one that is up in the mountain. So those that are up in the mountain are the skiing, snowboarding, ski jump. Those below are all the ice sports. Uh, so basically, what we do is each each country is designated um, a section in the village. Uh, Malaysia only has a very small team, so we only had one apartment room. Uh, one unit lah, basically, and then like Korea, USA, Canada, they had the whole building for themselves. Yeah, because they have a big team. Um, so what we do is we decorate our own our own rooms with our flags and all. So it's really cool to see the different flags. You know, okay, this is Team Canada, this is Team USA, Team Japan. Um, and then what we do is th there are a lot of different communal areas there. So we have like a, a games room where there's like pool table, uh, air hockey, foosball, some arcade stuff, uh, a little sitting area lounge to just chill out with other athletes. And then we have our, our, our canteen, which is this huge hall of food. Um, everything is free. So it's like basically like a, think of it as a giant buffet. Mm -hmm. um, there's all sorts of food that you want, halal food, non-halal, kosher, um, seafood, meats, vegetable, vegetarian, vegan. Um, but the best part was McDonald's because that oh. was also there. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, McDonald's, is, McDonald's. The, is the official it's the official sponsor of the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a McDonald's there with a, a limited menu. We had mm -hmm. our usual cheeseburger, quarter pounder, um, I think McChicken, mm -hmm. chicken nuggets. And again, it's free. So uh, uh, that was my highlight there. I enjoyed McDonald's so much <laughs> because it's free. So every day I had chicken nuggets. Um, but unfortunately, that's the last year that McDonald's was the official sponsor. So from oh. now on, every other Olympics, there's no more McDonald's. So I was very lucky. Oh, I experienced man. the last McDonald's. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so so that's how it is with food. And then, like you said, sometimes in some different places, there are snacks and all that. Um, vending machine. Uh, with Coca-Cola um, products in there, like mm -hmm. Powerade and all that, also free. Uh, but yeah, it was very unique. All right. Was it more stressful like during the Olympics compared to like Oberstdorf, like overall? No. no? <laughs> oh wow. Okay. No. It's it's honestly <laughs> for me game. it was less stressful. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was less stressful for me because the the biggest stress was to get to the Olympics. Mm. So Oversoft was the decision maker, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. Whereas at the Olympics, I was already there. I qualified already. I got in. For me, that was the goal. My goal wasn't to make it to the finals. It would be great if I did. That mm -hmm. would be awesome. Mm -hmm. It'd be a bonus. But mm -hmm. sometimes, like I said, you can't be too greedy. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got. I achieved my goal. I was happy with that. Whatever that's after was a bonus for me. And it's not like I just gave. Like didn't care anything, didn't train at all. I still train as much as I can, you know, mm -hmm. put in as much. Um, and when I competed there at the Olympics for my short mm -hmm. program, I actually got the my best score for the season. Mm -hmm. So it was actually better than what I did in Oberstdorf. Um, yeah, but unfortunately, best, it just, right? yeah, it just wasn't. It was like one point away, mm -hmm. um, so I didn't make it to the finals. Mm -hmm. But you know, like I said, I I was happy that I made it that far. Mm -hmm. um, no regrets. I did what I can. I did my best. That's as much as I can do, right? And uh, yeah, so I, I just enjoyed my time there. All right, sounds good. With this, would you yeah. say like um, having like realistic goals is like very important for athletes or like you know people? Yeah, De definitely. Um, mm -hmm. Realistic goals is what actually brings you closer to what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to dream. That's great. Um, but if you if you dream too big and there's no way you're gonna get it, you, you, like you know, one in a billion chances, mm -hmm. right? How often are you the one in a million? Mm -hmm. You know, when mm -hmm. people buy a lottery, how often that person is gonna win? Mm -hmm. So it's it's better to set something that you are able to control, mm -hmm. because when you're in control, you you know your progress, you know how to get there. It's a little bit more, as you mentioned, realistic. Mm -hmm. So for me, realistic goals is, is 
definitely a key point. And again, don't get me wrong, it's not mm. like a country. Mm -hmm. Dream big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you know where where your your level is, where your standard is, and then from there you slowly work step by step. All right, it's like putting in X amount of work, you get like Y as a result kind of thing, right? Yeah, but yeah, and and you know what? It's it's more so like if if you set small steps, it will gradually go up to there, right? You want to mm -hmm. go on like a, a step mm -hmm. and not just shoot straight up mm. because it's, shooting straight up is it's not impossible but it's very difficult, right? Whereas if you create small steps, eventually, slowly, but eventually you get there and you can see mm -hmm. progress. If you try to jump straight away up, there's nothing to, to gauge, right? It's mm -hmm. like all of a sudden it just happens. Mm -hmm. you know? It's like if a tree grows, it doesn't just grow from 1 cm to 100 meters. Mm -hmm. it, eventually mm -hmm. it slowly gets there and, and then from there you can see halfway if something goes wrong, then you, okay, you can reevaluate, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. small goals in between small steps. All right. All right, thank you for the good advice right here. <laughs> <laughs> All just, right. That's just how I see it. Like, I mean, there's so many other ways to do it, but yeah. All right. When you hit the ice, what do you want to like express to like the audience and the viewers? Cause like for your 2019, um, like your, the music that you chose for 2019 were ever though for your short program, right? Yeah. And yeah. for your free skate, you had seven nation army and then you had yeah. highway to hell. And then, yeah. you, then you ended it with uh, kings and queens. So um, yeah. these are like, you know, figure skating, ma many like the traditional ways, of course, to be like very smooth, elegant and graceful. Classical. And like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but right. then you, you coming in with like very like, <laughs> you know, strong bassy music with like a, a beat to it. That's, like, what do you want to that's like, fun. portray? I, mm -hmm. I, for me, when I chose that song, especially Seven Nation Army, Highway mm -hmm. and Kings and Queens, I just wanted to have fun. I wanted to, to involve the audience as well. Mm -hmm. You know, to to be after all, like I said, it's a performing sport. So to to get them pumped up a little bit more excited, you know, because like you say, a lot of skaters use more classical, mm -hmm. more gentle music. You know, the usual the, the the usual skating music. It's nice to change it up a little bit. Gets gets them a little bit more interested. You know, especially the younger generation. Um, I find that if we use music that can relate to them a little bit more, mm -hmm. we're gonna get more audiences. People are gonna be more interested in the sport, um, and also just to change it up for the judges a little bit, you know, because they sit there for the whole day, listening to similar or you know that kind mm -hmm. of genre of music. Mm -hmm. Give them something a little bit more to to wake up, mm -hmm. uh, and just have fun. For me, honestly, that program was just to engage with the audience, mm -hmm. have fun, let everybody be a part of um, the performance. All right, as a Malaysian, yeah. I would say um, that definitely worked for me because um, I always thought, <laughs> yeah, figure skating is this like, you know, if someone's playing Mozart or Beethoven at the yeah, background. Yeah, so, yeah, I kind of want to just break that stereotype, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know that's, and it's not just me, a lot of skaters are doing that as well. Mm. So very interesting programs coming up now. I think that's the way to go for the sport if we want to keep it going. Sounds good. Yeah it, yeah, it really um, resonates with like younger people like myself, I would say like, yeah. you know, that, that I beat. hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As for, okay, this is totally not related to the Olympics. Yeah, but, um, You know, ahead. since we are talking about like, you know, how you choose your song, what was the inspiration yeah. be behind like the exhibition skate that you did of the janitor? <laughs> your, your, one of your most yeah. viral skates. Uh, apparently, I woke up one day and that was... What was surprising was I did that program before, just nobody picked it up and then mm. I did it again and then mm -hmm. it got bigger and bigger. It's like, wow, oh my. Uh, so for me, the thing, the thing about myself coming from Malaysia, it's because we're from a smaller nation of figure skating, we're not mm -hmm. as well known, right? So there's always this indirect stereotype that, you know, this skater from Kampong, how uh, how he know how to skate? So <laughs> for me is to to make something unique, um, so people will remember, and then from there hopefully build up the name for the country as well. That like, oh they skated from Malaysia, then maybe Malaysia becomes a little bit more you know well versed with the sport. People think mm -hmm. there are skaters from Malaysia, um, so I needed something unique. I needed something different, and because an exhibition you can do whatever you want, right? It's a show program, so I figured okay I needed some props to work with. Right, make it a little bit more interesting, interact with some people, this and that. 
um, and then I thought, you know what, I need I need to find some music that you know that is a little bit more upbeat as well. Right, that's why I chose Fireball. Um, and at the same time, I'm thinking, what can I do that people hasn't done before? You know, like we have famous skaters like Kurt Browning who did Singing in the Rain, so he had an umbrella. Uh, and then some people use chairs, some people use table. So I'm thinking, what is something that I can use that is easy to find everywhere I go? And, you know, for me, like, and then I saw um, in Sunway, in Sunway, we had this, uh, when I started skating, we had this one janitor there, right? Um, Super nice guy. Um, ironically, he's from Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. uh, but and he used to he on his day off he would come back and skate. Oh wow! Right, so I thought, mm -hmm. oh that's quite cool. Maybe you know what? Let's let's try to be a janitor because he was really funny. Oh, he looked nice. like the Bangladeshi version of Mr. Bean. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> he was yeah, he was a funny guy. Um, so you know, I was like, okay, let's try it out. Let's see if I can make something out as a janitor, and then it happened. Nice. Is yeah. he still like so in Sunway? Like, do you still see him? Oh uh, no, he he uh, went back home already. He, oh, he's, no. he went back home to, <laughs> to his wife and his kids and all uh, that. Like, he was always a fun guy. Mm -hmm. uh, very fun, very funny. He always brought some some uh, light to mm -hmm. to all because he yeah, just very comical. I see. But yeah, right. so mm -hmm. even on his off day, he'll come back to the ring. So oh nice. So, okay, why not? Let's let's try it out. <laughs> interesting, interesting. All right, so. Lastly, in this segment, I want to ask for some like advice. What would you say are some realistic advice for like up and coming young athletes that like dream to make it to the Olympics someday? And not just for the athletes, but also for their parents, cause um, you know, getting to the Olympics or being a pro athlete, of course, it comes with a cost. Like oh to, yeah, um, yeah, you need to like send them a lot of sacrifices, a yeah. lot, a lot of sacrifices, mm -hmm. a lot of time. Um, and of course financially uh, mm -hmm. every sport is different but I think at any sport when you go up to the world level and the Olympic level it's gonna cost um, so and I'm not saying if you don't have money you can't do it no, there's always ways to do that uh, but I think for athletes what's very important is you have to number one you have to enjoy what you do um, if you don't like it deep down inside there's no point because you're forcing yourself to do something you don't want to do. You yourself as an athlete have to to realize that this is what you want to do. Then that's that's the first thing that sets your, your motor going to, to keep you, yourself pushing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, should you be the one who wants to do it, um, it's important for you to know what your goal is. Every athlete has a different goal. Some only want to do it for fun to a certain stage. Some want to get to the Olympics. Some want to be world champions. Figure out what your goal is. Again, coming back to, is it realistic? Is it possible? If not, start small first, right? And then, for example, if you, you want to be an Olympian, awesome, great, figure out how you can be one. Because there's a lot of qualifications, there are a lot of things that you have to go through in order to make it to the Olympic team or to be selected to go for the Olympics. If you don't know how that works, then you're already lost because that's the pathway that you have to follow, right? If there are certain requirements that you have to do, figure that out get yourself started as soon as you can so that you're already on that path. Uh, so that's, I think, very important for a lot of athletes, uh, knowing your path, mm -hmm. right? Because um, mm -hmm. a lot of us, they, we do it, but then by the time we find out how to get there, it's too late, right? So mm -hmm. understanding the road there. And then for parents, <sighs> the thing is, it, they are the driving force behind the athletes. If if they want the, the kid to go far, then Either you commit to it or you don't, right? It's, and it's a big thing to ask. Mm. Some parents will try the, their best and sometimes it might not work out, but you know, at least they tried. They, they gave it their all. Um, and then some parents are totally like against sports and all that. Then it's better off the parent talk to the kids and say, this is how we feel, this is how it is. So there's no mixed signals, lah, let's mm. put it this way. And the kid knows what they're getting into as well. Oh, right. So it's not, it's not so like, you know, you don't mm. feel the impact as hard when you find out later <laughs> on that your parents actually yeah. don't want you to do this. <laughs> no one, yeah. Right? Yeah, give them a heads up first, so you know, then, then they can figure out, okay, do I have to work to pay for my my uh, training? Mm -hmm. Or maybe I can do this one. Because there's a lot of athletes around the world who are actually working to to pay for, for their training. You know, like for myself as well, when I came here, I, I need to work as well to, to 
keep myself living here. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's just in Malaysia, a lot of us are very fortunate. Parents are always there to help us. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some cases that you know some are less fortunate. And that's how it is. All right, that will conclude our segment two questions. So let's jump right into segment three. So with the ongoing- Hi guys, it's Sky. Thanks so much for making it this far into the video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. It would be amazing if you guys could subscribe, like, and share this video with your friends as it takes a lot of time to make one of these videos. And lastly, do look forward to segment three of the interview with Julian Yi. And with that, I hope that everyone stays healthy during this pandemic and that everyone has a great week ahead of them. Thank you and see you guys soon.